Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Bellphone BFTD910UV multiband portable radio. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what it can do. Okay, so here we go. We got the BFTD910UV. So let's go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. And as per usual, I unwrapped everything so we could speed up the unboxing process. So first thing we have here is a paper manual. Here we have an earpiece with a speaker microphone here. We have a programming cable. We have our antenna. We have a 2500 milliamp hour battery with a USB charging port on the bottom. It is a micro USB. We have our charger. A lanyard. a belt clip and the radio itself. So let me go ahead and get this reorganized and we'll get the battery on, put on the belt clip and talk about everything going on here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is take our radio and we're going to add on our belt clip. It's easier to put this on without the battery as the belt clip is not under tension. Okay, now we're going to take our battery and it's just going to go in and click down. And then we're going to take our antenna and just screw that right into place. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is just go over the general button layout on this radio. Our top button here is our push to talk A. Our middle button is push to talk B. And then we have buttons 1 and 2 which are programmable by the user and the software. Then we come around to the top, we have our flashlight, we have our orange button which can be programmed for a, a variety of things in the software, and we have our power and volume knob, and an LED indicator here for transmitting and receiving. If we go to the front of the radio here, we have our menu and OK button, we have our call button, we have our power button, we have our A and B key, we have our down arrow and up arrow, we have our return key, we have our hang up key, and we have our P key. Let me go over to the other side here. We have our microphone, speaker mic, or USB programming cable port here. And if we look at the bottom, on the battery you can see we have our USB charging port and our charging indicator. So let's go ahead and turn this radio on. And I'm going to take off the screen cover. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how this came programmed out of the box. Uh, I'm sorry you guys are seeing some flashing on the screen. It is not doing that in real life but it is just a frame rate issue with this type of screen on a camera. So both of our transmit buttons will just transmit. Uh, they have currently the top button on a short press set to turn monitor on and off. Long press changes the transmit power and it'll cycle through high, medium, and low. The bottom button Short press is Vox Enable and Disable. 
and long press is scanning. So we'll go on to our front keys here. Our POW is our power key. So we can get into our power menu and change the level. The P key is kind of a neat key. It'll bring up a large battery and it'll show you the battery level currently at 100%. Our A and B One. will change us between our A and B One. zones. Then our call button will take us into our call log. Hang up button doesn't do anything since we're not actually making a call. Then we have our menu. And in the menu we have our address book, our scan list and settings, our zone settings, text messages, our call log and our general settings. So we're going to go into settings here. So you have your radio settings, display contrast, tones, transmit power, boot display, keypad lock, language, LED indicator, talk around, box, SOS rescue, covert mode, which allows the radio to do like vibrations and stuff instead of uh, tones and lights. Display contrast. Okay. We have radio info. So battery level, device ID, firmware, software version, hardware version, serial number, and location info. Send location text message. And that's all that's in the settings menu. So call log, we can see missed calls, answered calls, out calls, SMS, inbox, presets, outbox, zones, you can change zones here. We only have one zone currently. And scan, enable, view and edit list. And I'm sure enable goes to disable if you actually had the ability to turn it on. And then address book, contacts, groups. And then let's see, they have their top button set to something that's invalid. So we'll see what that is in the software. But let's talk a little bit about the features this radio has, and then we'll move on to our next step. So the BFTD910 has frequency range options of VHF 136 to 174 and UHF 350 to 390 megahertz, 400 to 480 megahertz, or 450 to 520 megahertz. This particular one has the 400 to 480 megahertz option. This radio can hold up to 128 zones with up to 64 channels in each, totaling 1,024 channels. It has narrow and wideband channel spacing. The output power on high is 4 watts for UHF and 5 watts for VHF. And it also has 1 watt low power output. This radio is DMR and FM analog modulation capable. It is IP68 rated and it is capable of using ARC4 AES-256 and TF card encryption. It has a built-in GPS. It has man down feature, which triggers an alarm when the radio tilts beyond a certain degree set in the software. It has a lone worker mode, which requires a response from the user at set intervals and triggers an alarm if the response is not received. And it has emergency alert functions. It is capable of DMO pseudo trunk, allowing the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency and automatically roams between multiple sites in a DMR system. Okay, here we are taking a look at the software. This is the BFP-DH910F software. And we're gonna go ahead and just work our way through the list and see everything that this has to offer. Make that a little bigger for you. Okay, so we, we can see the frequency range of the radio that we're working with. Uh, your serial number will be populated when you read the radio. And then you have your firmware version. 
general settings, we have your actual device name, ID, repeater ID, password, locale, um, a lot of different settings for hang times, delays, um, your LEDs, push to talks, there's a bunch of different options here. We're just going to kind of go through slowly through this and uh, I'll read some of the things and then you guys can kind of look at some other stuff or pause if you want to take a closer look. So we have tone alerts here, all the settings for that. Positioning mode, which is your GPS. Password allows you to do a power on password for your radio. And automatic power conversion. <clears throat> Switching to high power, middle, and low power. And we're going to go over here to button settings. Long press durations. So you can change that if you don't want to have to hold it for too long or if you want to hold it for a very long time. Uh, this particular radio only has four programmable buttons. In your one touch call settings. Short message here. You can do predetermined text messages. How's it going? I'm okay. Yes, no, you know, whatever you might want to be sending to whoever you're communicating with. And then the encryption configuration on this one, we only have the uh, basic encryption in this software. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's because this radio doesn't have the higher tier soft or encryptions enabled, or if that's just specific to this software and if they're still working on that. Menu settings, so menu hang time, zone, you know, this is some of the stuff that I have selected. If you wanted to see frequency and channel, uh, or just a frequency, <clears throat> you can set that. You have your address list, a whole bunch of stuff you can do remotely, de device disable, uh, enabling, erasing, etc. Scanning, pretty simple. Roam, if you're going to roam between sites. Short message. Call log, uh, if you want to be able to see all that information. This is stuff that you can actually see when you're using the radio. Um, config, it shows you the menus you have access to, and then all the utilities within config. Power, LED, squelch, box level, GPS, etc. Then we have our signaling that you can do. I'll leave that here for a second for you guys to look at. Then I have our alert settings, our work alone mode, where you have to respond. Uh, red alert, emergency mode. GPS settings. Then we have our contacts, so we have a caller ID of Simplex on one, and then our receive group one contacts, this is a group contact, which is how I set these things up for testing. Receive group list, you can add everything into the receive group list that you'd like. Then we have our channels, so we have level one, zone one, under here. This is kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they have it go multiple drops before you actually get to channels. Um, but this is how they have it set up currently. So then you can see within level 2 zone 1, you can actually see uh, the two zones that I have, which is an analog and digital. So here in the analog, you can see I just have a 146.52 and a 446. And those are just both of the uh, ham calling frequencies for VHF and UHF. And then same thing down in digital, I also have the ham calling frequencies. But let's go ahead and jump into an analog channel here. So you can see these are all the settings that you can mess with in here. Selecting the channel type, your bandwidth, if you're going to do a scan list, <clears throat> squelch level, and if you want it to just be a receive only channel. And then you pipe in your frequencies here and then you can click the mapping. You can either set your offset to something if you are doing similar offsetted stuff, or you can just leave it to zero if you're doing a simplex frequency. 
<clears throat> like I have here. Then we have our receive PL right here. And voice select and then transmit. We have our PL uh, plosive here. Subsonic standard phase, non standard phase. <clears throat> we have our power level and our timeout timer. The timeout timer rekey, how long of a delay do you want after you've initiated your timeout timer? <clears throat> Busy channel lock, I believe, and then voice close. So then let's look at a digital channel. So you up here, you just select digital channel, and then you have all your digital options here scan list, your color code, if it's going to be receive only. Bypass, direct mode, slots, you can do one, two, or the pseudo trunk, <clears throat> voice priority, your encryption is here, frequency, and then your receive group, whether you want the emergencies and alarms uh, enabled. Then over on the transmit side, simplex, emergency system, power level, timeout timer, admit criteria, and if you want a private call, acknowledge. Then we go down to our scan list. Here you can add any channels and all channels that you would like to scan. And then below that we have our roam list. And if you're roaming between sites, you can put the channels and sites that you're going to roam for and if you want to actively search those sites. And then rescue configuration, enabling that <clears throat> whistles, flashlight, uh, intermittent flashing, and then sending out uh, distress messages over random periods of time. So it's kind of neat. So that's about it for this software uh, in this version. Uh, I initially had some issues with an older version of the software, and uh, Bellphone sent me a newer software, which seemed to clear up the issues that I was having. So uh, I think they're still, you know, progressing and working through these softwares and making them uh, more functional as time goes on. So now that we've seen the software, let's go ahead and get out into the shop and uh, do some testing on the radio. We're going to test the power out, throw it on the Tiny SA Ultra, and, uh, you know, see what it looks like. See if it's on frequency and maybe do some receive testing as well. So... Let's go ahead and get out there. Okay, so I have my Tiny SA Ultra set up here. I have a spread of 400 to 480 megahertz. And we have our analog 446 channel pulled up here. So let's go ahead and key it up. And we're seeing 446.08 megahertz. And you can see there was no birdies or any other signals popping up on the screen. So it's not a dirty transmitter, which is what we wanted to see. Now, real quick, we're going to go ahead and change over to our 146.52 frequency. And we're going to change here. And we're going to go from 136 to 174, so the VHF spread. And we're going to go ahead and key it up. 146.536. It's bouncing around a little bit. And just take this with a grain of salt. I don't know how accurate this Tiny SA Ultra is, but this just gives us a general idea that it is functioning and it does seem to work. So now we're going to switch over and we're going to check out the receiver. Okay, so we're going to put in a 1K tone at 3 kilohertz, and we need to add in our negative gain, which is a 40 dB attenuator. Okay, and so let's go ahead and fire this up. 
Get a nice clean signal there. So we'll start dropping it down. So I'd say at about one neg 118 five is around 12 dB sine ed approximately. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this over to our 446. We're gonna do the same test. So neg 58, nice clean signal. So I'd say around neg 121.5, we're approximately at our 12 dB sign add. So the UHF receiver working slightly better than our VHF receiver. Now I'm going to go ahead and swap it over and we're going to check the power out on VHF and UHF. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on our UHF. And we are on low power, so let's go ahead and key it up. And you can see there is about a quarter watt. Let's go click our power button, go medium, and we'll key it up again. Approximately 0.7 watts. And then we'll go high. And we're looking at about 2.2 .2 watts. Now we're going to do the same thing for our VHF. And we're going to start low power. Okay, and we're going to transmit. We're looking at about 0.4 watts on low on VHF. Go mid. Approximately 1.38 watts. And high. We're looking at 3.31 watts. And I'll say it again, take all this with a grain of salt. You know, this is not a very expensive watt meter. This is not a very expensive spectrum analyzer. So this is just mostly for reference to give you an idea of what the radio is putting out, if it's on frequency, that are there any spurs, and what kind of receiver does it have? Is it pretty decent? So now that we've concluded this portion of the testing, I'm going to set this radio up here on the bench. And I'm going to go out and talk to this radio with another radio. And we'll record the footage in here. And then I'll swap another radio in and then use this radio to transmit into it so you can hear the audio quality both ways. So let's go ahead and get set up for that and we'll get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and test this radio out using my Anytone 878 UV2+. Plus. And we're going to go ahead and start out on our... 446 in DMR. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Test. Okay, now we're going to test the VHF 146.52 on DMR. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Test. Okay, we're going to go ahead and test analog 446. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Test clear. Testing one, two, three.
four, five. Test clear. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and test the VHF analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Test clear. One, two, three, four, five. Test clear. Okay, so we're going to do our closing thoughts on the VF TD 910 UV. Uh, overall, I actually really like this radio. I think it's a very simple radio. Uh, so if you want something that's kind of a field expedient radio that you can actually hand jam frequencies in and stuff like that, this is not that radio. But if you want a radio that's simple to use and you can pre-program with all the channels that you're going to want to use, uh, I think this is a good option. The fact that it's dual band is a huge thing for me. Uh, the more bands a radio is capable of using, uh, the more I like it. It just makes sense so you can have one radio that can talk to a whole bunch of different people uh, versus specific radios for each type. And that's just a personal preference of mine. Some of you may feel differently, uh, but that's okay either way. Uh, the button feel on this radio is really good. I really like it and I appreciate the black and yellow uh, screen combination. I think it just looks good. It's just kind of fun. It's not something that I've seen on other radios, uh, any of the ones that I have anyways. I think the software is still being worked through and they're getting it upgraded and up to date. So I think that'll be something interesting to look for in the future as they just clean up bugs and add in other things. One thing that I did not find on this radio or in the software that was on the specs page, uh, specifically I recall the encryption was not the same. On the spec page it said that it could do uh, AES-256, the ARC-4, and also another encryption type, but only saw the basic ARC-4 uh, encryption on here. So that's something worth uh, looking into or asking the question about. Uh, it may just be the radio that I have, it just wasn't included in the features, uh, or perhaps it's still being developed. I'm not really sure, but you know, I think it's just, it's real good to make sure we're accurate along the entire way. But overall, I like this radio and I fully intend to set it up and have it as a ham radio that I use uh, when I'm out and about. If I want something that's just simple, small, and capable of talking on anything that I'm interested in. So I also didn't have access to my ham buddy who normally helps me do the testing for this particular video. So I had to do that testing myself. Uh, it was a lot more laborious and I hope that it at least just showed you the general functionality. Uh, you know, obviously I wasn't doing a max range test and stuff like that on this particular video. So hopefully down the road we'll be able to link up again and get some more stuff like that for these radio videos. But I think that about covers it on this radio. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can and as accurately as I can. You can also reach out to Bell Phone directly if you want to ask them specific questions. They obviously have the answers. So I think at this point I'm going to close out the video. Thank you guys for sticking around this long to watch the video. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to subscribe, that would help the channel out and help me grow so I can continue to produce more content to show you guys more different radios and just kind of things that I think are cool and fun. So thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.